memory is your brain holding on to information that it thinks it will be useful for your life later on. And this is tricky because your brain actually gets a lot of information from the environment all the time. Imagine all the reels that you scroll through, all the conversations that you have, your brain has to constantly decide what to remember and what to throw away, which is why it is useful to understand how memory works. I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior, I'm a neurologist, and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about the brain and everything that makes you healthy. If you haven't subscribed yet, do so, you will see more such videos on your timeline. So if you want to improve your memory, here are five things you need to do. Number one, time your focus. Understand that focus is not a permanent state of mind. Your focus is not constant, in fact, Focus comes and goes in a waveform. So it's very important that you try to remember things at a time when your focus is at its peak. This means that you should be studying in small bubbles of time, which could be around 15 to 20 minutes. So if you manage to sync up your studying time with your focus time, you will be able to remember a lot more things that you read in that duration. And whenever your attention dips naturally as it is normal to do, remember to take a small break in that time. Step number two is testing. Whatever it is that you've just read, try to quiz yourself about that. Turn a fact into a question. What this does is it forces your brain to bring back the information that it has just stored in order to remember it. Simply by doing this, your brain will remember that fact better. Suppose if I give you a sentence that Delhi is the capital of India. What you need to do to remember this is to ask yourself, what is the capital of India? And simply by doing this, it forces the prefrontal cortex part of your brain to go into the memory bank and retrieve that information. And this is especially useful if you do this after a gap of around an hour or two hours. So one trick that I used to do when I was studying for my entrance exams was at the end of the day, I would quiz myself on the topics that I read that day. And that helps me retain that information much better. Step number three is to understand the concept of chunking. Now, if you have to read an entire chapter, your brain will not be able to remember all the things in that chapter in one go. What you do is you break down the chapter into smaller parts and each of those parts you will remember separately. After you've remembered three parts, you will put them all together and try to remember all three parts as a single unit. Revise all three together. After a while, your brain starts to recognize all of them as one unit. After that, you can repeat this process with three more parts and that becomes a second unit. This is called chunking. Now, after you have two or more of these chunks, you can put those bigger chunks together to form a mega chunk. So clubbing information together and packaging them and remembering the overall package as a whole helps your brain to store information more efficiently. Think about it as packing your suitcase for travel. Now, technically, you could carry all your items of clothing separately, but isn't it easier when you put them all in a suitcase neatly and carry the suitcase instead? Your memory works exactly like this. Try chunking pieces of information together and you'll be able to carry that information much better. Step number four is using your senses to improve your memory. And the two most useful senses for this purpose is your eyes and your ears. When you come across a new piece of information, first try to visualize what is it that you are learning and then also try to add some sort of audio effect to it. This could be in the form of a rhythm of how you say those words or it could even be some music that you attach to it. This is something that you can figure out by trial and error. I used to use this when I had to memorize a list of items. So the way that I read those words, I added a kind of rhythm or beat to it and that helped me remember that entire list better. And finally, step number five is the importance of rest and recovery. Small rests are important while studying itself because as I told you, attention can wax and wane. So every 20 to 30 minutes, it's important to give your brain a few minutes of rest and just as important is major rest at the end of the day because sleep is where memory is consolidated. All the information that you've read in the day for your brain to be able to store it efficiently, you need sleep. And an important part of recovery is also movement. Now this might seem counterintuitive. How can moving help you remember what you've read better? But the more you move and exercise, your body makes a protein called BDNF, which is brain derived neurotropic factor. And multiple studies have shown how 
This is the protein that is helpful in cementing memories in your brain. So imagine that you go on putting bricks on top of each other, but if there is no cement, those bricks can fall off. Similarly, it doesn't matter how much you've read. If there is no cement to keep all those information in place, you could just lose them. So the next time you're distracted, you've forgotten everything that you've read. So remember to get some form of physical exercise to improve your memory. I hope this video has been useful to you, especially if you're students preparing for exams. Keep track of all these five things. Do them exactly as I've described and you will find it easier to remember what you've read. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to see more such videos on your timeline and I will see you guys soon. Bye everyone. Take care.